Hello and welcome to Wise Man Channel. Today I'm going to prove to you that the repo and the modern clients works on the oldest piece of hardware that I have, which happened to be this old baby. And you would learn JTAGging in the process. So join me. First, we need to find some things and in the repo we have some excellent pieces of documentation. And that documentation would be found a little bit down in the repo, table of contents, and here's how you set up your system. I am assuming that you already set up your systems for things, but then you will find this one, the JTAG note. And it's perfect. It has the pinouts and some other people's uh, steps, but you would need to know some simple ones. Uh, how to install the OpenCD and what to do. But I'm going to show you this instead. So if I'm going to jump over to this, here is the old Proxmark. It's the old beloved Proxmark that we used long, long, long time ago. It has this beautiful high rose connector that we all hated so much because it broke. And the micro USB, and the click octocoppler. The... It's just very nice but with a, the JTA connector. Some big ass caps. The FPGA is still larger than the MCU, you can still see that it's 256 on it. And this has the old firmware on this one. Now, what more do we need? You also need to have a J-Link Sager. This is an old clone thingy that you can buy from China, AliExpress. If you have money to buy the real one, do it. But this is it. I'm gonna show how this one works. You get this nice little cable that fits very nicely into, uh, if you see that little LED shown there, you see it fits in here quite nicely. If you have this one green, clicks in, perfect. Yeah, so this is what you need, one. I'm not gonna hook it up yet, because I'm gonna need to show you the terminal window. First of all, you need to make sure that the current repo compiles for the size of a limited size that this MCU has, and it's 256. Now, there are some directions on how to do that, but in the, in the end of it all, you just would need to... Oh, let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger, right? Let's see. Is that big enough? Yes. But there's a make platform sample, right? I'm going to do it like this. What you need to do is copy make platform sample to make platform like that. Then you need to edit this one. Let me show you. I'm going to remove that because it's not needed. You're going to have a generic and you're going to tell it the platform size. And you will need to remove some standalones here or some, some code that you cannot use. So I'm going to make an image that doesn't have LF in it. And some Felica and high tag is also going to be LF as well. Felica is high, uh, high frequency. And barcode that rarely happens. So yeah. You just go out of that, save that and out of it. You make clean, make J. Let's see what it's set up here. Uh, too large. Oh man. All right. Then we have to edit this one again. We have to remove some more stuff. Um, what can we do that? We have to go in here. And I need to do this. Copy that. Do it in here. And I'm going back to docs. And I'm gonna to go to compilations. All right, let's go there. Fast if I do this way, set on the build here. Modem manage 
show I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. Oh, no, advanced. Advanced compilation, sorry. Uh, skip BT, we don't have that. Generic, blah, blah, blah. What more can we skip? This is standalones, we can skip those. Uh, let's see, logic. Let's go over there. Heading back on here. No, no, and we remove. Sent to us skip logic, right? Was it uh, logic RF? Copy. Let's see if we can get it pasting now. Oh, there we go. So I remove some more, make clean and make it done. We got it. What's interesting is in the recovery folder. So if you look in that one, you see that there's a Proxmark recovery bin. That is what you're gonna keep track of. And it's about 256 kilobytes. Well, it will work. <laughs> Next step is to go into tools folder. And in the tools folder, you'll find a, another folder called JTAG Open OCD. Which leads us into this part of it. Video. First of all, you need to do the sudo uh, apt install opencd, uh, which I hope you already have uh, done. But if you don't, let's just go ahead and do that. And uh, open OCD. I already have it in there, so shouldn't be an issue for me. You will see the install. Now, when that is done, uh, you need to modify the same thing here as you did from that voice. Uh, and that is this, the configuration sample file. You need to copy that one onto configuration.sample onto configuration. You need to do like that. And then you can go in open OCD configuration and look at it. And I have a Sager J link, so this is correct for me. And if you have something else, you would uncomment that one and comment out this one. I don't have to do that. So you're all done there. Now, I would need to, let's see if we can go back to the Sega cam. I will need to hook this one up here. Oops, oh, that's the wrong cable. Okay, so many cables. Oh, you see it hooked up there, it start flashing a little bit. Let's go back to this one. And if we look at the instructions, it tells us to run open uh, OCD flash recovery shell. Now, here's the thing with that I noticed. There's another thing that you need to edit. Um, let's see if I haven't fixed that already. Good status. I think I. Yeah, I did. All right. Let's. I'm gonna check this one out. Uh, let's see. Flash recovery show. Okay, great. So I reset this one. Um, we need to go in here actually and do this edit this again and what you need to do is go to this line it's a long 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 line here here's the thing is it does this erase sector zero that's the bank zero and then it does erect, say, erect erase sector one the bank one and on those 256 kilobit versions that were all the old ones you need to remove this because it doesn't have that one so you remove it like that, you save and you go out. And now we all set. I'm just gonna make sure that my virtual machine has the Sager connected. And now it does. And then we run the recovery flash to see what happens. Now it looks like nothing happens, but it actually does, but you don't see it. So we wait a little bit.
Boom. Warning, flash driver doesn't support with free driver proofs. All right, cool. But that's it. Uh, you're done. You have now flashed the modern bootloader and the full firmware onto that device. I can show that by swapping over because now we need to unplug it. And remember when you did it with the J-Link now, don't have your uh, USB connected to your device. It's powered by the J-Link, so don't do that. So we remove this one. And we're gonna do this beautiful, I had to find this connector again. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's such a long time. Hook it up here. And then I'm gonna see if we can do like this. Uh, hook it up. Uh, let's see. Mm, that. It's just a little click sound and it is. Let's see if we can do like this. Yeah, you can see it. I can remove this one. And then let's head back here. Let's head back into this one here. And since I just connected it, I must make sure that it's connected to my virtual machine. And when I now run it, you see that it says 256 kilobytes, PM3 generic, the HF and all that stuff works. And if I run a command, I put a tag onto the card, it all works. And if I run HFMFF check, it finds that as well. And there you go. This old baby working with the latest clients and firmware. Isn't that sustainable? For 10 years I had this book. I never use it, of course, but it's beautiful. And with that, I hope you learn how to JTAG and realize that your old stuff still works. Don't worry, super easy. See you later.